Welcome back to my conversation with a literary prince. No, I'm not kidding you. Seriously, he is a literary prince. He's from the Travancore royal family, so that explains the prince part of it. And literary, well, here's the proof. All of this. <laughs> you know, Shri, I haven't read these two books. I haven't read The Magic Store of Nu Cham Yu. Wu. Wu. Wu and The Devil's Garden. Yeah, but yeah. this is something which is very, very close to my heart. No Chambu, because uh, all the illustrations, the cover and the ones inside, were all uh, done by my son uh, Vinayak. Mm. So I'm very, very proud of this uh, book. And this is well? And this yeah. is the earlier book, it's uh, Devil's Garden, mm. which is uh, actually, it's, it started out as a short story. And the publisher said, why don't you make it into a novel? That's how it uh, happened. You know, I, I highly recommend uh, Shri Kumar's latest book, Maria's Room. It is such an engrossing read that uh, it's very difficult to snap out of that, uh, the mood that it sort of envelops you in. It's, it's dark and it's heavy and it's very disturbing, but in a very pleasant sort of way. You, know, you don't want to come out of that situation. Hmm? I think that's something like uh, even the writer... A writer basically feels like that. It's, I mean, you would know being uh, an actress yourself. Is it politically correct to say actress? I yeah. always say actress. The word is okay. actor. Nobody says actress anymore. Okay, okay. but I do. So, um, for an actress to um, get into a role and then come out of it takes time. It's basically like that for a writer to get into that atmosphere. And if he is strong in that uh, uh, sort of uh, completely immersed in that uh, atmosphere, it's difficult to get out and somehow or the other that transmits to the reader as well. I feel, I find that that's what happens. No, but your books have that quality, even Lament of Mohini did. Which, and I was going to ask you that question about the, the discipline, you know, the, uh, the discipline that you need to be a writer. It's almost like being a runner, you know, running a marathon. You want to give up because it just takes so much concentration, fierce concentration. So what, what kind of sadhana do you do when you feel like getting up? And you know you need to stay put, what do you do? Earlier I used to uh, sort of wait for the muse and then when it didn't come I would sort of go around and do other things and then come back to it. But then I realized that uh, this is like a 9 to 5 job. Your muse is always there with you. But when you're sitting down to write, it's a very serious uh, sort of thing. So if I have a problem with what I'm writing at the moment, maybe a novel or whatever it is, for me it's easy to go into a play which is a completely different thing altogether, or write a poem, or a short story, which is a completely different genre altogether. So I can go from that, uh, where I'm immersed in one novel, uh, which I'm writing and which I'm immersed in. I could get out of that and go into a completely different thing mm -hmm. and come back refreshed into the novel. So, And how does it feel when you see your play come alive on stage? I mean, if it's well done, I mean, I think the answer is quite, uh, you know, evident. And if it's a well-done play, of course, you feel happy. But I don't mean it like that. I just mean just these characters that you've lived with for so long, you're giving it to somebody else, a director, and you, you can't interfere, or you didn't, at least, when I was working with you on that play. You just stayed away. But how does it feel? Actually, of all the uh, writing that one does, the play is the one which is most immediately satisfying because... Uh, if you're writing a novel, you may have a reader coming in and telling you something, you have a review, and it takes time. Here, you're sitting there in that darkened auditorium and you have about um, so many, 700, 800 people together watching and appreciating or not appreciating uh, a play. So that's, uh, that reaction is immediate, your feedback is immediate, and there's no satisfaction like seeing your lines, your characters evoke some sort of a happiness or some sort of a good uh, response in uh, the audience. That's a good part of it. Uh, the sad part of it is that you're, this is the only thing that you write which goes to somebody else and that somebody else uh, interferes, really so, interferes. So can a with playwright it. be a director? Because you've, you've created these things anyway and you, you know the setting, you know the mood, you know the lines, you know everything. So is that possible or no, is that, that a special skill? Yes, actually that's why all these people from Tendulkar to Datani to everybody who uh, sort of does both, they do that because they have the creative freedom to work on their own um, writing. But here I have not, I don't think I've, 
I don't know if I'll start now, but uh, I haven't had that exposure except when I used to direct plays in college, at least one play. <laughs> I, I, it was a grand statement, but only one play I directed in college. I used to act in plays in school and college. So that is the only uh, practical thing I have done. So I leave it to somebody who is more uh, professional, who is more into it, and I uh, leave it to fate and God and uh, thank my lucky stars if the play works. And you know, um, I read also that you wanted to be a magician or, or were you a magician for a while? No, I was very interested in magic. I was very, very high. How did you know that? Well, I do my research. Okay, I was, I was very interested in uh, magic and I used to do all sorts of little tricks and uh, 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 and in fact, in one of my uh, uh, novels, which I'm writing right now, there is a, a magic element and there's a magician uh, who's there, which is, a, it's a favorite uh, thing of illusion, which is what a writer creates, what a playwright creates, illusion. So, um, I must say that uh, you do magic with words, Shri. You do. I can't and wait to see your next book. How long will that uh, be? That book, uh, Gayatri Club, mm -hmm. is something which I'm, I'm uh, the two things I've always wanted to do, to write about Madras mm -hmm. and to do this little pacey thing which everybody is interested in reading and finishing fast, which doesn't take a lot of effort, like maybe Maria's room uh, would. Uh, in fact, that's what you said. No, it's, I didn't say that it took a long time. I just mm -hmm. said that you, you don't want to read it fast because you want to savor it, you know. Okay, it's not, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah that's that. it. So, so it's not many people would not the, the vast majority of people whom, they, uh, whom you call the mango people, the arm janta. <laughs> okay. uh, they maybe do not um, uh, sort of relish going through the book, yeah. everybody in that uh, segment. So here, uh, what I'm trying, to, I'm trying to do is create something which is easy, mm. which is an easy read, and also bring in a lot of elements about Madras, new and old. So go into the past and a thriller element and a little bit of magic because now I can indulge myself. Yeah. And who knows, it might even be uh, adapted and made into a play. Let's hope. You know. A movie? Maybe a movie, yeah. Maybe a okay. musical. Yeah, and I, uh, I, I've got the lead actress in mind. Yeah, I that. think, yeah, I, yeah. We, we, won't, we won't ask who that person is. Let's, uh, I think that's... Truly off the record that's going to be. <laughs> Thanks so much, Shri, for joining us. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you. Anu, thank you so much. <laughs>